Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 27th, 2023, a Monday. This is the time of the week where we got together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. Typically this meeting happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with U.S. holiday. Um, in the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app to keep track of when the meeting times are. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. As I mentioned, there is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. This uh, notes document starts out as a Google Doc you can edit and then is published uh, later on GitHub. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel in the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages in that channel to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the notes document for us to read during the meeting. Uh, the meeting is held in five parts. I'll explain each part as we get to each part. Um, and we will now start with the first part, which is community news. Um, this, this is news that uh, comes from uh, mostly the uh, Python on my controllers newsletter, which I'll talk to you about more later. Uh, first item I've got is that Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4s are coming back into the retail channel. Uh, they've been rather scarce since 2021. Uh, Jeff Gearling notes that supplies are easing in, in line with what Eben Upton predicted, and there's some links in the notes document about this. Uh, Jeff also discusses alternate CM4, for, CM4 form factor boards and the state of the ecosphere. And then another item uh, related to Raspberry Pi is um, Raspberry 5 Pi review. Uh, there's a comprehensive review of the new Raspberry Pi 5 board, and there's a link in the notes doc from Brett, which is on brett.dk. And then finally, um, there's an interesting note um, uh, which says Lemore Freed's code is often a de facto standard, and now ChatBT is using it. So uh, this describes a, a short write up in IEEE Spectrum about um, how uh, uh, Lemur Freed, also known as Lady Ada, has found, has, has you been able to use ChatGPT to uh, write uh, things like Arduino drivers or CircuitPython code. What she finds is often that it's cribbing from the code that she wrote already, and she has a number of prompts that she uses to uh, get it to behave well when doing this. And there are some links in the notes document about uh, both from IEEE Spectrum magazine and also on our blog about what she does. Um, it's also useful to note that she's an expert and she uses it in a way that um, saves time for her being an expert. But uh, for people who are just getting started uh, as we know, things like ChatGPT don't necessarily give you the right answers. So even though it may appear to be very confident, it may not be correct. So be careful if you're going to use it and consider trying to find something written by a human first. All right. 
So where does all this news come from? It comes from the uh, CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, also known as the Python and Microcontrollers Newsletter. It's a community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. There are archives available at a link that's shown in the um, notes doc. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, you can contribute to the newsletter, and we'd love to have you uh, supply things that look interesting. You can email cpnews at adafruit.com, or you can tag us um, on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, or also we have some presence on Mastodon and on um, threads. So both of those are interesting. Uh, and the newsletter is edited by um, Ann Varela, who works for Adafruit and uh, does a terrific job creating this newsletter every week. So. Subscribe and enjoy. All right. The next section is um, the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So first of all, um, overall, in the past week, there were 16 pull requests merged. There were 12 authors of those pull requests and five reviewers. And there were 11 issues closed by 10 people and 14 opened by 13 people. And now we'll talk about the CircuitPython core firmware itself. And um, Scott, is Scott, no, Scott's not here today. Yeah, I'm happy oh, to yeah, do it. you are, okay. okay. Yep, just at the bottom of the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was looking for an S. So oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, okay, so for numbers for the core, we had 10 pull requests merged from six different authors. Uh, some infrequent names here are Bill88T, Retired Wizard, Cooper Dalrymple, and Jesse Jones. So thank you to those uh, infrequent authors. We're happy to see you do that. Uh, we had three reviewers, myself, Dan, and Jeff. Uh, we have 21 open pull requests. So again, we're comfortably on under that 25 uh, PR uh, single page limit. Um, we have, uh, so that's for pull requests. Issues wise, we had seven closed issues by six people and four opened by four people. So we're net down three for a total of 658 open issues. Uh, we use milestones to prioritize and track um, the issues as they come in. Uh, the prioritization generally just applies to the us Adafruit funded folks. Um, so if you want to pick up something that we marked long term, uh, we're happy to support you in doing that. Um, we have one open issue for 10.0. We have two issues open for 8.2x. So those are things we'd like to get into stable sooner rather than later. And then the main uh, focus of the Adafruit funded work right now is on 9.0. And we have 60 open issues under 9.0. Um, we also have two issues not assigned to Milestone at the time that these uh, stats were taken. So we'll just, uh, I think generally we are keeping up with the triage, um, but that's what that number is useful for. With that, that's the core. All right, thank you, Scott. And uh, we'll move on to the libraries, the state of the libraries, and uh, Foamy Guy, could you read that? Yeah, definitely. Um, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, which are the Python layer of code that uh, provide either drivers to help you interface with certain bits of hardware or helper functionality to allow you to achieve stuff uh, without having to write as much code. Um, all of these libraries start uh, with the name Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then whatever the, the library is, the driver or helper will come after that. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had six pull requests merged uh, with uh, six authors. The names in here that are newer or uh, less familiar to me, at least, uh, are Leon Anavi, uh, Dirt, Dirt Tobias, and Miller Kamamat. Uh, so thank you to those folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors. Thanks to our other uh, authors as well, Babalak B, Vladak, and uh, Ella Pekinen. And then uh, with those six pull requests that were merged, we had two reviewers. So thanks to Liz and myself for the library reviews this week. Um, of those merged pull requests, the oldest one was 87 days old. So getting back into some of the 
uh, older ones, and the newest one was just one day, so also uh, keeping up on some of the new ones. That leaves us at the uh, end of the seven-day period. That leaves us with 60 open pull requests, uh, the oldest of which is 466, and the newest is just one day. Um, in that same seven-day period, we had three closed issues by three people and eight new issues opened by seven people, and that's leaving us with 692 open issues. Uh, and of those, there are 19 of them that are labeled good first issue. Uh, you can find those 19 on circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is a great place to go if you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython, uh, in particular on the Python side of things like these libraries that we've been talking about here. Uh, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. On that page, you'll find a list of the open PRs and open issues. Uh, you can also use a drop down to filter those issues specifically to the good first issues if those are the ones you're interested in. Um, if you're looking to contribute, that's a great place to start. Uh, if you want to get into reviewing, you can uh, check out the open PRs, click through those, test any that you have the hardware for, uh, or just take a look at the code for syntax and spelling, etc. Uh, you can leave comments on those PRs. Let us know that you looked at it. Once you're comfortable with it, we can also get you leveled up to the review team so that you can leave reviews. Uh, if you are interested in contributing code or documentation, you can check out the uh, issues on that contributing page to find issues that look like they're up your alley that you'd like to work on. Um, again, the good first issue filter is on there if you'd like to take a look at those ones. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved, but you don't have much experience with Git or GitHub, we have a guide on the Adafruit Learn system that will walk you through how to uh, make those contributions um, with Git and GitHub. So if uh, you just don't have experience with that, but want to be involved, don't let that stop you. We can definitely help get you up to speed on that sort of stuff. Um, on the uh, PyPy stats side of the house, we have uh, in total on PyPy 79,179 downloads across all of those 321 libraries in the past seven days. Uh, the top 10 list is noted here in the docs if you want to take a look at that. And then uh, also in the notes doc is the list of libraries that were updated as well as new libraries in the last seven days uh, on the community bundle side of things, we had a new uh, library for Toml support. Uh, thanks to Ellie Pekinen for that. And on the uh, Adafruit bundle side of things, the one that caught my eye this week was in Display Shapes. Uh, so check out that stuff for the latest on libraries. Uh, and that's what we've got for this week. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Fungi Guy. Okay. Uh, next up is um, the Blinka section, and uh, read by Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, so Blanca is our CircuitPython compatibility, la compatibility layer for uh, MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had zero pull requests merged. There are currently five open pull requests among all the repositories. There was one closed issue by one person and two opened by two people, leaving a net of 79 open issues. We had 16,970 Pi PI downloads in the last week, 6,908 Pi, Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 126 supported boards. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Our next major section is called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes out loud when I get to them in the list. Okie dokie. So first up, uh, myself, and I'd like to thank uh, Jeff for fixing various recalcitrant build problems of various kinds in the past week and continuing to pursue them uh, as, as they come up. All right. Next is uh, DJ Devon 3 Hello, thank you. Uh, I would like to send a hug to Rimwolf and Anecdata for helping with an Adafruit request socket error. And Anecdata again for more help on the same issue and introducing me to the traceback module. Okay, great, thank you. Next up is ADCC, I'll read theirs. I'm seeing a huge improvement in fetch port submodules on main. It no longer does a bunch of redundant checkouts when I run it on a second port. A big hug to whoever, whomever is responsible. And that was Jeff, who uh, 
consolidated some code that had to do with fetching submodules and made it more precise. So thank you, Jeff. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Dexter, who tested my changes in Circup on Windows. Uh, very appreciative for that. Um, thanks to maker Melissa for making the Qualia helper library that has the built-in initializations for all the different displays that Adafruit stocks. It made it super easy to get up and running with the new display. Uh, thanks to Jeff for working on dot clock display support in the core. I think this was a little while back, but I just got around to trying it for the first time, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, thanks to Liz for uh, publishing findings and instructions on um, developing CircuitPython device, uh, d developing on CircuitPython devices from Android mobile devices. There's a uh, playground post that shows how to do that, uh, which is really great information to have um, updated and current since Android is changing all the time. This has changed a couple of times throughout the years, different ways you can do this. So uh, thanks to Liz for that. Uh, on uh, Discord, thanks to the user Bear, uh, over the weekend during a live stream, he shared some uh, Stack Overflow link with me that turned out to be the exact thing I needed at the time. Uh, also, he hung around during the stream and gave me several other tips and ideas uh, while I was working on different stuff. Um, thanks to uh, Bablock B for adding support for arcs into the Display Shapes library, and uh, Group Hug for everybody. That's what I've got for now. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, next up is Jeff. Hello, I have a group hug, uh, but I want to call you out, Dan, specifically for reviewing some of my PRs on the weekend. Um, it's not always healthy to be working on the weekend, but uh, we do it, and it makes the stuff, uh, you know, we, this back and forth, it's nice that you're there to uh, review those when I'm feeling like doing it, so thank you. You're welcome, and I, I like moving things forward, so we don't have to wait all the week. All right, uh, next up is Kenny. Hello. So first up, I want to thank my folks for everything that went into an amazing dinner last Thursday uh, and to my housemate for helping me with cooking my two contributions to the meal, which was uh, cranberry sauce, which was not too difficult, and uh, dressing or stuffing, depending on which obsessive camp you're from, uh, was far more difficult, but turned out perfectly. Um, thanks to my wife, Rose, for fighting the good fight with responsive image processing on the web. Turns out it should be easier than it is in 2023, but it absolutely isn't. Um, but we have kind of sorted out uh, a truce with it, and uh, I'm really excited. Um, to everyone who's being super patient with me as I deal with getting everything going uh, with my latest project, and a group hug. All right, thank you. Next up is Liz. Hello. Uh, this week I've got a group hug and a one that celebrated Thanksgiving. Hope you had a good holiday. Okay, thanks. And next up, Maker Melissa. Um, see, I wanted to give back to Jeff for addressing an issue when the project was out that I had worked on, and group back to everyone else. Okie dokie. All right, thanks. Next up is Dexter and Ari Bears. Uh, thanks to Dan H. for the Building Circuit Python Guide. You're welcome. And a group hug. And finally, we've got uh, Scott Tannard. Hello. Um, first, a hug to I'm Not James for the async I.O. work that they're working on. And then a uh, holiday-related one to my partner, Becca, for doing a ton of work. Uh, Thanksgiving weekend was delicious. We had uh, her mom and my parents there as well. So it was a wonderful weekend. And, and thanks to her for doing a lot of that work. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That finishes off hug reports, and we'll move on to status updates. Uh, this is the time of the week when we get to t we tell folks tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start, and we'll go through the list alphabetically as before. Uh, when I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. And if we get into if there's a discussion that you want some feedback on, we can uh, discuss it in the in the weeds section, which comes after status updates. So I will start. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm continuing to fix uh, CircuitPython 8.2x and 9.0 milestone issues, which are all kinds of things. Sometimes it's just retesting something and realize that it's been fixed in 9.0, and sometimes it's more complicated than that. Um, 
I discovered uh, within the past couple of weeks that ESP32 S3 BLE was not really very functional at all, um, even acting as a central. I thought that you could connect to things. But um, I did some debugging and got it working to, and talking to a simple peripheral. In my case, I tested it with a pulse oximeter and that works in the 900 builds. So previously you could use it as a central, but uh, only uh, advertising and scanning. It didn't really work to connect and discover surfaces. It still does not work as a peripheral. Okay, so if you want to do something more sophisticated with BLE, uh, use one of the NRF boards. And uh, finally, a simple thing that I've been working on, which still doesn't quite work yet, is that I like the um, absolute newest build to include more information other than a timestamp and the commit. Uh, I'd like to include branch name and the PR number. And I got that working for the builds of a PR, but not for the merges. And I have to figure out what's wrong with that. But it should be make it easier to say like, oh, you should use this commit. And it should be make it easier for people to do things like bisects, that is testing intermediate versions of things to figure out what's wrong or when something went wrong. All right, so next up is DJ Devon. On a related note, that sounds very handy. I uh, woke up to temp bands from Open Weather Map and Adafruit IO due to a socket error was reloading every five seconds. Uh, used the opportunity to improve temp band error handling. Spent some time using Moo's emoji support to make a serial hierarchy visualizer to see where it's failing in the loop. Catching the exception and then doing a supervisor reload, which fixes the issue temporarily, but it's not an ideal solution. Haven't been able to track down what the cause is. I'm trying to communicate this one in an issue report. It's difficult because it's very intermittent. It can fail between five hours and five days. Uh, as it, and I submitted a PR to update Adafruit Request Twitch API example, as there have been some breaking changes with their API. The current example no longer works, uh, and the PR should fix that. And I also now use settings.toml with web workflow variables as a default. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, I'll read uh, ADCC's uh, status report. We'll be taking a look at whether or not the Sonoma problem, C issue 8449, affects iOS 2. This is a problem where I, uh, Mac OS Sonoma um, has puts in write delays of tens of seconds sometimes between writes, and it really messes up using the CircuitPy drive. Later this week, when my Lightning to USB adapter arrives, I'm also planning to do some more in-depth tracing to see if greater eight megabyte, greater than eight megabyte file systems is really a workaround. If it is, I've got a method of faking a greater than eight megabyte file system working that I'll drop as a draft pull. And I'm continuing to work on uh, RP2040 underscore BLEIO. I'm well into adapter now. Thank you very much, ADCC, for working on uh, BLEIO for the RP2040. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. Okay, uh, last week I had a shorter week, uh, but I enjoyed some yummy food and uh, time with uh, family and uh, loved ones over Thanksgiving, so it was really nice. Um, the uh, stuff that I did do in CircuitPython world, though, I got the uh, initial setup of uh, Qualia S3 and one of the round displays. Tried that out for the first time, uh, and it made a perfect um, display to test out the new Arc functionality from the Display Shapes library uh, and showcase that. So uh, got that working um, on Friday, I think it was. Um, over the weekend, I dove back in a bit to the Blinka Display.io Pygame display, uh, which is a way to use Blinka Display.io on PCs, like a regular Linux or Windows PC, in order to display stuff inside a Pygame window. That had been broken uh, with the newer version of Blinka Display.io. I took one crack at trying to fix it a little while back, but wasn't successful, and so I got back into that um, this weekend. I did have some more success this time around. I was able to get it drawing properly, um, but it does still have some other issues to work through. I think there's some weirdness going on with threads, because sometimes 
when you run it, you get a different outcome, even though you didn't change the code any. Um, so I still need to kind of trace through and figure out what's going on and probably fix a few things. Um, but the other thing I was really happy about was I was also able to get away from using uh, PIL, which uh, in the old version of Blinka Display.io, it was using PIL internally to keep track of like bitmaps and things, uh, but it doesn't anymore. And when I had made my first attempt at doing this, uh, a couple of weeks back, I had tried to hold on to using PIL, uh, thinking that it would make it easier to convert the images how I needed. Um, but I eventually uh, found a way to go straight from the bytes that we have now in Blinka Display IO and get them into Pygame without actually needing that intermediate um, extra dependency of PIL, which is super cool. I'm happy about. Uh, so a little bit more to to figure out, but it's looking really good on that front now. Um, the other uh, major thing that I did was finished up refactoring the web workflow support in Circa. Um, this is now separated into backend classes that manage the interaction with the hardware device, uh, be it USB or web workflow, respectively. Um, in doing that refactoring, I ended up breaking it on Windows, but I have now gone back and fixed that and tested on Windows 11. Um, so I think that's good to go now. And then uh, for the upcoming week, the only thing that I have uh, on the top of my head to look into right now is libraries, uh, testing and reviews, getting back into that. There's still a couple more uh, mini MQTT ones uh, to look at, and then um, I'll probably branch out further from there because at some point I'll want to do something a little bit different. Um, so that's what I've got for now. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up. We have Jeffler. Hello. I have a belated hug report for everybody who put fixes in between 900 Alpha 2 and now. It is much more stable than uh, Alpha 2 was uh, on the project I've been working on, which is a camera and HTTP server on the ESP32-S3. So anyway, on to what I'm up to. Last week, I finished up some very simple demos for the Pi camera, including a web interface for changing the camera settings. Had a marvelous Thanksgiving dinner. My own food experiment, which was a pastry-wrapped vegetarian roast, was a success, and I met some new people. And finally, I made a pair of flash size-saving pull requests to both CircuitPython and MicroPython. And I need to double back and update the one in CircuitPython based on Jimmo's review uh, of the MicroPython commit. Uh, it just, you know, saves 100, 150 bytes of flash, but sometimes we need every byte we can get. I need to, um, this week, make the Adafruit CircuitPython Pi Camera repo public, edit to PyPI, read the docs, bundle, all that stuff. And that uh, a prerequisite of that is getting this last uh, demo committed. The hardware is still unreleased. Don't ask when it will be out, but uh, we've certainly been teasing it a lot on Adafruit, sometimes on Ask an Engineer and random one-minute videos. I think we're getting close, but who knows when it will come out. All right. Um, then I am, for my next project, getting the scope of adding a JPEG decoder to CircuitPython, probably initially for only Espresso family microcontrollers, and then using that to do some kind of demo or project with a Qualia board. Um, I don't know what that will be. And I really, really, I, I've been saying this for months, need to tidy up my space, but now it's become important because I ordered some Christmas gifts for myself this weekend, and they need space. So I have to find some horizontal surfaces that will remain clear so I can put the new stuff there. And, you know, in, in a month when I get that all working, I'll let you know what it is I got. And that's all from me. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Next up, Katni. Hello. Speaking of tidying, uh, it took over a week, but I have essentially all of my parts and project kit organized and labeled. I went through something like 140 feet of label tape. There is some waste involved, but there are also a lot of labels. Everything is in compartment bins, regular bins, tool chests, or drawers. Through organizing, I also reclaimed a ton of space. All of the regular bins and drawers were full, and there are now 10 empty drawers out of 36. Um, the final piece is moving frequently used tools to the closer tool chest, and the less frequently used ones to the further away one. That is in process and will probably evolve over time anyway. I'll do a post or series of posts on how I opted to organize everything in case anyone is interested or it helps uh, someone out with their um, organizing plans. Uh, image handling is finally sorted out for my blog and it's incredibly straightforward to do now. Uh, my wife put a lot of work into this, 
and um, now I can do uh, very simple inline images and then a uh, very easy to do uh, gallery that um, shows multiple images and you can click on uh, different images and um, if you click on the main image it, it pops it open in a light box. Um, it's amazing. It's exactly what I wanted. I'm super excited about it. Um, I use Pelican uh, as a Python powered uh, static site generator and we will be turning this into a plugin for Pelican. So if that's ever anything you're interested in, uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and then my first post project post on applying acoustic panels to my office door will go out this week. There was enough that it turned into a series of posts and the series will go out uh, in subsequent days uh, following the initial post, obviously. And that's what I've got. All right. Thank, thank you. And next we have Liz. All right. Uh, I was out most last week due to the Thanksgiving holiday, but I did, however, finish assembling the patch bay I've been working on for the Keystep Pro and happy to say that it is working well. Uh, so I have the patch bay mounted above my Eurorack modules, which makes patching very ergonomical. Uh, I did run into one minor issue where I realized I hadn't ordered enough PCBs. I was short two of them, but luckily my partner has another mill and has milled a lot of PCBs before and was able to mill two additional PCBs for me. Just took a little reworking in Eagle and changing from service mount resistor to a through hole. Um, and then this week I'm documenting the Qualia Space Clock project. I'm excited to get this guide published finally, and Noah has done an excellent job with the enclosure designs, very retro space. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Next up, we've got Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Lost in my window. Oh, here he is. Uh, this week, uh, I, um, I took, or this past couple of week and a half, uh, I took the some time off and I added it. Uh, but before that, I had added a bunch of missing boards to circuitpython.org. Uh, I've just about caught up on emails and GitHub items now. I'll be updating the main qualia guide with more info here sh shortly. And then uh, I'll update a bug that Aaron and Jeff ran into with the code from my message board guide. And uh, possibly I'll write up a guide to document the qualia helper library. And that's all I have planned at this point. All right, thank you. All right, next up, Dexter, I'll read theirs. Um, Missing Tony D, that's Tony Ducola. He wrote some great guides. He did some videos too. I, I would add, if, if you're not aware, that he did pass away not too long ago, which is quite sad. Um, got the Unix port of CircuitPython working with the ChatGPT code interpreter. Now I can write a function and ask ChatGPT to test it using the CircuitPython interpreter. This is limited, but useful. And finally, we have Scott. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so my schedule has been really off and on, uh, but this week looks like I'll be here most days this week, except for Wednesday, where we're going to go uh, visit my family over across the water. Uh, my parents are at home. My mom, uh, as I have said, is diagnosed with cancer so she's living out her her last days here as as happily as she can so she's going home which is awesome um i did some retail therapy and i got a new framework laptop uh so i get to do linux on my laptop now and it's working pretty well i took time this weekend to get it going um the start of this week is getting uh, caught up in chats and emails i'm also getting a flu shot this afternoon um, and once I get through that, I'm going to be looking at web workflow fixes and improvements. There's uh, about three issues designated for 9.0 that I'm going to take a look at. Some of them are pretty easy to knock off. Uh, but then there's also reliability things that I kind of expect to hit uh, as we go through. Um, I'm hoping to stream on Friday. That's a little bit of a question mark, but it's been a minute since I have and I'd like to. Um, We've got an electrician coming Thursday, Friday as well. And of course, uh, we'll see how my mom's health is as well. Uh, but yeah, hoping to stream on Friday and I will let folks know if that changes. Uh, that's uh, my week so far. All right. Thank you, Scott. And we wish your mother an easy time. Yeah, she's uh, getting lots of family time, which has been awesome. Great. 
And finally, we'll, we have in the weeds section, which is for long-form discussions, but it's empty, so we'll just skip it. And we'll move on to the wrap-up for this week. So uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for uh, Monday, November 27th, 2023. Thank you, everyone, who participated. Uh, if you'd like to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting, which is the audio part plus uh, screen capture of Discord, uh, will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, the meeting will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Uh, the next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific U.S. time. And a reminder that you can go to the meeting by going to adafru.it slash discord. If you want to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at sign circuit pythonistas role on discord. So we hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. And I'll stop recording.